Hi Muddy, this is a video walkthrough of the process that really the Grove designed for Forgotten Harvest using the graphic game plan. It kicks off with an ORS chart, outcome, agenda, roles and rules, a couple things to point out. Um, all I do here is to update uh, which goal we're working on today. And by the way, I'm going to be walking you through the one that I did for them yesterday with goal two. Um, with the agenda, all I did was I dropped in screenshots of really the two big moving parts of this, the timeline where we would organize the ideas in terms of what happens first, second, and third, and then the actual graphic game plan. Okay. Um, of course, you can switch up whoever's attending. I kick off with a, a check-in that's related back to the goal of the day. So in this case, goal two, let me just jump down there so you can see it. Goal two is provide a consistent mix of nutritious food and so in chat, I say, how would you define a consistent mix of nutritious food? And then they type it in, and then I paste it into here for later. So that sets the table and gets them checked in. Then what I do is I walk them through at a very, very high level, spending about 30 seconds on this. I tell them uh, that this is Kathleen's draft of the strategic planning document. It's got the vision, the mission, uh, the uh, priorities against access, supply, knowledge, and heightened community awareness. And for example, today, we're gonna to be focused on goal two, provide a consistent mix of nutritious food. And then what I did was, is that all I did is I took this text, I copied it, let me lock it back up again. And then I took it down into this timeline, which has now been filled out. I'll go ahead and unlock everything just so I can show you what's underneath here. I took it down to this timeline and then when I hit paste, there's all the content. Um, and I just converted it into text boxes so I could move it around. So I put goal two up here, and then what I had them do is I had them start um, organizing the content for me in terms of what happens first, second, third, fourth, fifth, down to last. So they came up with a critical path, okay? Um, this stuff over here, it came out that they these were um, uh, not necessarily on the critical path of what happened first, second, third, fourth, um, I didn't put it underneath the somewhere else, which is to say that doesn't neatly fit on the uh, on the timeline portion of it. But as you can tell, there's a lot more here than there was in that original statement where we had only eight. So this was just as much harvesting new ideas and capturing what they had to say, but I was really driving them towards, all right, what happens first, second, third, fourth, and so forth. Now, I also had in the back of my mind the graphic game plan. And so as I heard, for example, these things, fundraise, fundraising, driver capacity, um, repacking, which is to say variation of volunteers, I recognize, as, re recognize those as dependencies, which would have a place later on in the game plan. So I didn't really worry about them showing up in the critical path. This is just really a brainstorming piece. And um, if it doesn't all fit neatly, into that first to last construct, that's perfectly okay. So I capture as much content as possible here. Then I introduce the graphic game plan and I do it using this explainer. Um, by the way, this thing starts blank, of course. And in order to explain it, I use an example of a tool shed. So my goal is in this case is to build a tool shed. The success factors are, well, it's going to match the design of the house. It's gonna park in the, I can park my car in the garage again and it's gonna add value to the house. So success factors are the benefits of achieving the goal or further detail. Then I snap out to uh, team and resources, which could be people, money, time, space, and expertise. And in this case, my sponsor is my wife who is telling me I gotta get my stuff out of the garage. There's me, then I've got my kids who are gonna help me build this thing. And I've got a few resources, time, money, the northeast corner of my of my uh, my lot, and then some expertise. I helped my dad build a shed last year. So this is all just as an example of what you might use a, a game plan for. Now, I like to have them do uh, stages, uh, well, the stages and tasks, enablers, and then challenges all at the same time because it just is a natural part of the conversation. Um, I'll walk through it linearly just for the sake of, uh, of, of explanation. But let's say that I'm going to divide up this project into four weeks, right? Week one is going to be de uh, design. You can see what's underneath that. Weeks two and three are going to be build. And weeks four is going to be finish and move my stuff, okay? So that's stages, tasks. So you could think of those as the phases, the milestones, the how you actually do these things. 
Enablers, another word for enablers would be, um, whoops, didn't mean to move it. Another word for enablers would be dependencies. Now, these would be things that we don't necessarily have control over, but things that would make or break this project, okay? There's actually a better example in the actual, and I'll show you when we get to it. Um, I, I'm not gonna go over it here, but I will when we, uh, when we go back to, to what we did um, yesterday. Challenges, of course, are the risks, unknowns, constraints, and what I like to do is to frame these as, as how might we qu uh, questions. If I'm worried that the HOA is not gonna approve my tool shed, I'd ask how might I ensure that the HOA is going to approve the, the tool shed? Um, if I'm not sure about the grade of the yard, how might I correct the grade of the yard and so forth? Um, what if upcoming travel gets in the way of things? How do I make sure upcoming travel does not get in the way of things? So that just uses a little bit of, of uh, positive psychology there. Now, if you take a look at what we did, we took most of the content that was over here and found a place for it on the board. Um, I'll get back to enablers and dependencies here. Uh, so for example, driver capacity, um, that's not something that uh, Forgotten Harvest controls, but it does make or break their model. Fundraising, they, they can never be sure of how much money they bring in. The variation in supply of volunteers, who shows up on a Saturday to do this work. Agency capacity, so the beneficiaries uh, capacity, and then their variations in demand is something else that they don't necessarily have control over, but will make or break um, uh, the, uh, the goal for them. So we just name it and then move on. And there's a lot of that. Uh, so getting to the, what am I doing when, we're, when I'm facilitating this thing? There's not a whole lot of processing. We just name it, we capture it, and we move on to keep them going. Um, you can see the challenges are all framed as how might we with a couple of exceptions. And you've got the goal, which is here to begin with. I place that in. And then I really put it on them to say, all right, let's move these from where they are to over here. Now, if I was really thinking, I probably would have done a screenshot of this so I could have just moved the same things. Uh, in this case, I just copied and pasted. Now we also identified that there were a couple of things that had to fit elsewhere that actually this was, didn't have to, food programs didn't have to do with goal number two. And so I created a little bit of a penalty box to say, all right, we'll come back to this later when it comes to whatever goal three and goal four, okay? So that's the process. Um, <laughs> I tried to be quick. I hope I, did, I didn't talk too fast. If you've got any questions with this, just let me know. Happy to help out. Thanks a lot.